Hello viewers, welcome to the latest arrival at Just Ride Bikes Towers. You can probably guess what's inside here. You might have seen a quick first look the other day, but let me give you a closer look at the frame inside this box here. All right. So lots of polystyrene. We have a fork. More squeaky polystyrene. And lots of bubble wrap. So inside here we have possibly the most desirable frame launch in 2022. And also one of the most expensive. There we go. That is the brand new Carnago C68 in my grubby mitt right now. But doesn't it look amazing? So let's have a closer look at details on this before I get it built up. And I need to know from you, what group set would you put in a frame if you had a chance? Let me know down in the comment section below. So that's a frame, put that very, very carefully down there. We also have the fork in here as well. There's a fork. And in here we have a seat post, I believe. Seat post. And somewhere, we also have the handlebar in the box here. Can you get more bubble wrap? And here we go. And that is a brand new Aero one piece carbon fiber handlebar designed for this new frame. So let's put that to one side and have a closer look at what's what. So the plan for the frame is to build it up into a new long termer. The frame is on loan to me from Carnago for full transparency. They haven't paid for the video. I have a group set in mind for this, but I'd love to hear from you what group set I should fit. SRAM, Campag, Shimano, let me know down below. But before I do a build in the next couple of weeks, I want to give you a closer look at a frame. And because it's nice to have a closer look at a frame, you know, inspect it all and just to admire it before we attach all the components to it. Now, I have always had a soft spot for the Carnago C-Series frames, I have to admit. Of course, a legend, the iconic C40, was the first carbon fiber frame to win the brutal Paris-Roubaix. It's a real icon of the bike world. And the C60 and then the C64 were some of the finest riding bikes I've ever had the joy, the pleasure to ride. Something about the way they make the frame using that tube and lug method that creates a wonderful ride experience. I've had that similar sort of experience from riding similar frames made in a similar way. So Pali, uh, Sato as well, and other frames made using that method. And I have high hopes for this frame. I also had a soft spot for the old C64 and a C60 for the way it looked. That very classic, very traditional appearance, almost horizontal level top tube, and then very nice with lugs and tubes, which harks back to the 80s. Uh, but with the ride quality of a full carbon frame and the weight of a full carbon frame as well. So a real nice nod to the history of the sport, but offering a modern ride quality as well. But this new frame looks very different to the old one, doesn't it? The way the lugs emerged or flowed into the tubes looks a lot more modern, a lot more contemporary, a lot more streamlined, yet a small nod to the old C series before it. And this new C68, it's fair to say, is a very important frame for the company. Because the company has, if fair to say, traded on its history and race winning success over the years. But this is one of the first frames produced without Ernesto's name on a top tube. And the company is now under different ownership. So this is a real key pivotal point in the company's future kind of history. Where it goes from here, gonna set the path for the next several decades. So the frame has to be good. It has to deliver all that Carnago ride quality for the modern rider. So let's examine the frame in a bit more detail. And the fundamental underlying technology hasn't changed all that much in all those decades since the C40 and a prototype before it. But this is a first big step forward away from very noticeable lugs at each junction, so bottom bracket, seat tube, head tube, and so on. 
What this is, is more of a modular frame, a hybrid of that classic tube and lug process and the more commonplace molded monocot design we see on other bikes. So now we have the top tube and the half of a head tube of one sort of lug and tube element and the same for the lower half of the head tube and a down tube. And then the bottom bracket and the seat tube are one element and the rear stays are another element. And that reduces the number of parts in the frame down from eight to six in the new frame, which helps reduce weight and also improves the stiffness and other aspects of the frame performance. While still retaining that ability to customize the fit and the geometry of the frame in a way you can't easily do with a molded uh, monocot frame made in the mold. You have to make a different mold for each frame size. This, due to the way it's made, you can just change a few bits here and there and have different geometry, head angle, reach, and so on, much more easily and much more precisely than you could with the old method and with that more complete monocot molded design. And I think it's fair to say it gives a frame a much more modern, sleek look. We've got an aero shaped down tube well. You can see that cam tail profile, so flat on the back, aero in the front, and they pinch in the size around the head tube there. Uh, much sleeker at the front as well. Nice flowing top tube shape. We don't have drop rear stays, only a small drop from the top of the seat post there. A nice cutaway for the rear tire there. Nice, elegant, not too fat chain stays I like that. And the seat stays are fairly, fairly slim, but not the skinniest I've seen. This one is a disc brake frame, as you can tell from the flat mount caliper bolts there. There is a rim brake version available as well. And tire clearance has improved on this bike up to a 32 mil wide tire. There is an all road and a gravel version coming later in the year, but this is the road version. Throw axle at the back. One big change on the new frame is a T47 oversized threaded bottom bracket developed originally by Chris King and Argonaut Cycles, a US bike brand. And that replaces the old thread fit 86.5 system on the C64, which is actually very similar to T47. So basically you get threads in the bottom bracket so that nice easy maintenance and easy installation of a bottom bracket, but oversized for more stiffness and lower weight and so on. Those have benefits of an oversized press fit bottom bracket. So a big chunky bottom bracket allows for big chunky asymmetric rear stays, nice wide seat tube and that oversized down tube of course as well. We've got full internal cave routing on this bike and including on the fork as well. You can see a small hole in the steer tube. We have a round steer tube as well. No crazy D-shaped steer tube, a flat sided jobby here. Internal cave routing there and that's through axle and flat mount as well. 12 more through axles front and rear. And then we have a brand new aero shaped D profile seat post, the same as on a V3 RS. And that goes in there, as you know, and there's a seat clamp which is just inside the top tube space there. So no filly bolt to access underneath the top tube. So I like that very much so. That's on one side. And then in the head tube, we have brand new ceramic speed bearings, top and bottom. And these are the one with that solid lube that require no maintenance and should last a lifetime. So a real nice detail there. So headset bearings, especially for people concerned about internal cable routing with these handlebars. You won't have to do any maintenance, hopefully, with bearings of the quality. But question mark over long-term durability will be answered, hopefully, in this review of the bike. The fork is also brand new as well. And it managed to carve away a quite staggering 40 grams of weight from the fork alone with an external rib shape to apparently improve comfort and ride quality. And then we have a brand new handlebar as well. So a one piece aero carbon fiber handlebar, full internal cable routing there. It comes in loads of sizes, widths, uh, stem lengths as well. But you can run a conventional handlebar and stem and still have full internal cable routing as well. So other options are available if you don't like the handlebar that comes on a bike. But since it came with a bike, it's a one I'm going to use for now. It does look very, very sleek. So this is a 110 stem with a 39 centimeter width, which is pretty narrow. I would normally run a 42, so I might have to change that uh, during testing. A reach of 80 and a drop of 122. So that is a handlebar. So there are out front computer mounts as well. They go into that bolt there, it's a little bag of bits and debris for accessories like that. So since I got a frame and all these parts, I thought we put on the scales. Now I'm no weight weenie and neither are Carnago. They never tried to compete with bigger bike brands that do chase uh, the weight. 
so weight has never been a focus. So this is a size 51, which equates to a 55 centimeter top tube, so basically more or less my size. And I have my scales here. So the weight of this frame with the headset bearings and the rear through axle installed is 1,135 grams. So without the headset bearings and that rear through axle and the front mech mount, it might be quite a bit lighter as well. So that's the weight of the frame. And the fork weighs 475 grams with an uncut steer tube. The seat post is 119 grams. And lastly, the handlebar comes in at 319 grams. Another really interesting detail is the hologram sticker on the down tube, which is an NFC, so near field chip, which acts as a digital passport using NFT blockchain technology. So basically a digital passport for a frame, if you like. And the idea I think is to get around counterfeits in the market to ensure this is a genuine frame and if it gets stolen, uh, bike shop can tell who it belongs to from using the, uh, the data in this uh, little chip here. Whether it's a gimmick or whether it's a future for frames, for high-end frames, for all bikes, I know theft is a problem for bicycles and then using serial numbers below to try and track them down and reacquaint them with their owners. It's a tricky process. So whether this is a future technology to deter thefts and counterfeits and to better enable a stolen frame to be paired with its original owner, I don't know. Time will tell, I guess. So yeah, there's an interesting one. I'm not sure about that, but let me know your thoughts down below. So that's been a super quick first look at the new Carnago C68 in all its lovely glory. And my plans to get it built up very soon. Now, question for you, what group set should I put on it and what group set would you put on it? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. But next time you see the frame, it'll be built up. So watch out for that. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see a nice full build on this frame and then my subsequent ride impressions over the next few weeks. So I do feel very lucky, very fortunate, very privileged to get a frame in for review. I can't wait to share my impressions, my thoughts of the frame with you over the next few weeks and months. And hopefully even see some of you out on the road at an event here in the UK or further afield over the next few months as well. So you might see it up close and personal. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.